your, you know, what, whatever your choice would happen to be. It wouldn't make much sense until I knew that. But the notion of symbolism then is, is actually a very extensive one because it, it extends, extends through basically the whole of human culture and the way in which we structure our cultural experiences in order both to assimilate them ourselves and also I think to expand them, uh, to, to um, explain them, to expand them to other people. This points to the fact that an awful lot of what goes on in the world, of course, is nonverbal. Again, as a, when I was a philosophy student, and I don't know if I was fortunate or unfortunate enough to be a student at a time when what dominated philosophy, particularly in the English speaking world, was so called linguistic philosophy. And particularly a very narrow form of linguistic philosophy, notably um, logical positivism. And I still remember in my first year as an undergraduate student, I wrote a paper on the French philosophy of existentialism. I don't know if you explore those kind of so-called continental philosophy. And when my professor gave it back to me, he said, well, it was a very interesting paper, you know, you were saying, said, but unfortunately it's not, it's not philosophy. I said, well, why not? All these French people think it's, it's perfectly good philosophy. He said, no, 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 we, we, I consider this kind of literature, not, not philosophy. Suggesting a very narrow linguistically based analysis of what goes on in what, what constitutes philosophical problems and the way in which we analyze them. Okay. But if we stand back from that, of course, history has changed. The history of philosophy has moved on an awful lot over the last 20 or 30 years. And again, it's particularly been, I think, I think, I think, um, excuse me, excuse me. I have to tell my phone, it always rings in the middle of a meeting. Um, sorry. Um, that an awful lot of our daily experience is nonverbal. Now, at, a, at an everyday level, of course, we're, we're all kind of aware of this. You know, we read each other's emotions, for example, by lots of subtle ways. You know, how do you look? You know, you may tell me you're feeling fine, but I can tell from your eyes that you're not. It's very hard to analyze that kind of nonverbal communication. You know, an awful lot of it goes on all the time. So at, at an everyday level, of course, we, I think we've, we've become quickly aware of the, of the, of the extent of the nonverbal. But at the same time, if we pursue that question a little further, it takes us into some very significant philosophical questions. How much of the knowledge, how much of the way in which we understand uh, reality is in fact expressed through nonverbal means, including symbolic means, including the forms that we might embody in art, although again, art would not be the only way in which we embody, embody those kinds.